Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Adrienne and I talk about personal style, travel, and lifestyle. Summer travel 2022 has been an utter nightmare. From delayed flights to lost luggage, revenge travel is real and it's causing a lot of frustration to airport and flight crew as well as travelers including myself. With all that said, I would definitely do it again because I gained so much more experiences that I would have not had it not gone. That was one negative. So on a positive note, you can never get back time once it's lost, so I really urge all of you to live life to its fullest. I will be sharing must-have items for your trip as we navigate this chaotic travel year together. So first up is suitcases. Even though I already have hard shell suitcases, they don't exactly roll smoothly and I already knew I was traveling Europe solo, so I wanted something that would be really convenient for myself. I took various modes of transportation from trains, planes, and cars, and I just wanted something that would be easy for me to carry by myself. Yes, I did have some very kind people help me on trains and airplanes, but there were, in fact, a lot of people who refused to help me. Even if I asked them in English or French, they just completely ignored me and just waited for me to try to put my luggage on the overhead bins. I purchased the Samsonite Silhouette Carry-On as well as the Medium Spinner. Both are expandable and if you actually go on the Samsonite website, it says that this carry-on luggage isn't accepted in most airlines. However, I went on probably five to six different airlines and it was acceptable in all of them. It fit the overhead bin without a problem. They're tough, scratch resistant, and the Medium Spinner actually has a suit carrier so you can put your suit in without worrying about it getting wrinkled. They glide like butter and really require the least amount of effort to move. There's a compression system as well as an integrated TSA lock so you'll be prepared to travel. If you're looking to invest in some sturdy luggage, the Samsonite Silhouette worked for me all throughout Europe and there's no scratch on them. Next up is an external battery and you really shouldn't travel without an external battery. I even use one in the States because I like being outdoors and there's no way that I want to interrupt my day by sitting at a cafe or just charging my car for one to two hours. I actually remember doing that once during a solo trip to New York City in I want to say 2013. I stopped by Jamba Juice got a smoothie and just charged my phone for the next probably one to two hours. Sure, I did enjoy being in the AC since it was the middle of summer. However, I would much rather enjoy seeing the sights. So an external battery is a must and make sure you check the wattage because certain airlines won't allow you to exceed a certain amount. I do have a bigger one, but this is portable. It's not that heavy and there are slimmer ones available. The next must-have item is a travel adapter slash converter. Some hotels and resorts do provide this during check-in if you ask them. However, I really wouldn't risk this. What if they didn't have one? What would you do then? I do have a few different adapters for my past travels, but it was very country specific. So I had different adapters for each country. And for this trip, I was going to multiple countries. So that really didn't seem feasible. I wanted a single adapter that could carry me throughout all my international travels. I got this adapter from Amazon and it works wonders. You'll see that there's actually a C port and this charges just as fast as the USB-C charger from Apple. And with this one, I charged my laptop, my phone, the external battery I showed earlier simultaneously and it didn't blow a fuse. So I can attest to its reliability. I would definitely consider purchasing this all-in-one adapter because you never know when you'll end up. And you can see here, it has the uh, European, UK, and US adapters. And all you would have to do is press this button and then slide where you want to go. So let's say you want to go to Europe, tap one, and then you just stick it in the wall. It's that convenient. If you're scared about blowing a fuse, there is this compartment which has an extra fuse. All right, so next up is a raincoat. I really didn't realize how much it rained in Europe during the summer. I'm so glad I read weather predictions prior to my trip or I would have been drenched. All the hotels I stayed at provided umbrellas, but I really like being hands-free, especially if I'm in a new country. Having a raincoat is definitely a lifesaver and my raincoat has a lot of pockets both on the exterior as well as the interior. I brought a very lightweight raincoat and I could crumple and squeeze it into small places without worrying about it wrinkling. 
when it didn't rain, I just stored it into my tote and carried it along with me. And it really felt like I had nothing with me because it was so lightweight. There's no particular raincoat I would recommend, but just having one that's lightweight because you never know what the day may bring. Speaking of bags, I had two totes and two crossbodies during my entire trip and I found that was sufficient. I could have done with just one crossbody, but a girl needs options, right? Right here was my flight companion. I held all of my important documents in this bag along with water bottles I bought on the way, my external battery, um, just COVID accessories, mask, hand sanitizer, lipstick, a notebook, sweater, and I had a lot of extra room in case I needed it. This was my travel bag. I also brought along this Lacoste tote bag. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen this a lot. I wore this around Europe and I didn't mind if it got bruised up a bit and you can see it's already a little damaged here. In Utah, I did use it a lot. I was traveling solo, so I wanted a place where I can store everything I bought and everything I needed uh, for the day. And I didn't want to constantly stop at the hotel every time I purchased something new. I just kept everything in here. I also did notice that maybe 90% of Parisian girls carried a canvas tote. So having this on my shoulder as I walked around in Paris really allowed me to blend in well and I didn't stick out like a tourist. Also, I just want to note that I kept less valuable things in here and it covered my crossbody, which is where I kept my more valuable things. For example, I would carry my crossbody as such and I would have my tote like this so we cover it and I can make a completely different post on this but this is really the MVP of my trip the Marc Jacobs snapshot crossbody it's so convenient it holds all my necessities you really think it wouldn't since it's so small but it's just so convenient and I love how the zippers don't I wouldn't say of course they align but they go in opposite directions so it really deters theft and I'll make a separate video on this but I really love it it matched most of my outfits the strap is wide so it's really comfortable it doesn't cut into your shoulder and it gave me really easy access to everything I kept it at this height I am 5'2 so just for reference and I kept my tote like this and walked around all of Paris. And next thing you need for travel are zip bags. Come in any form, shape, style, but just having zip bags, so essential. They can store your liquid goods if you're carrying it on your carry-on or in your personal item. The zip bag does have to be clear, but I did have a bunch of these in my personal tote and my carry-on. I kept a bunch of important documents and just other knickknacks in here. As you can tell, I use these zip bags for so many different items and I can make a separate video on this, but remember to separate your cash. Prior to my European trip, I did request euros for my bank and you know how the saying goes, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Same rule applies here. If you're traveling, always prepare for the worst. Separate your cards and cash. Don't keep them all in one spot. My train of thought is to prepare for the worst case scenario so you're prepared in case it does happen. Don't keep everything in one place and that's where these zippered bags come in as well as another item I will mention later on in this video. The first aid kit. Never leave the country without one. For my trip, I did research pharmacy locations because it was in the midst of do we still need a COVID test to come back to the States or don't we? And right before my trip, that ban was lifted. So I didn't need to take a COVID test to enter the US again, but I already knew the locations of nearby pharmacies. If anything, I would just bring basic necessities. So bandages, alcohol wipes, uh, gauze, and napkins or tissues. Something that's really important for any trip even if it's in the States, is medicine. So during my years at UCSD, I could say I learned a thing or two about medicine. I would encourage you to bring some commonly used medications just in case. Things are most likely to be different overseas and it may be in a language you don't understand. So here are the medications I brought on my trip. Tylenol, acetaminophen, and essential. And Advil, ibuprofen, Renault, so Pepto-Bismol, Bismuth salicylate. I would also bring some Tums, calcium carbonate, because it works instantaneously. I also urge you to bring your favorite cold and cough medication because you really don't know and cough drops as well. Next up, hand sanitizer and masks. So I really can't live without hand sanitizer now. 
I use it before every meal, especially if bathrooms are out of the way, uh, they're busy, or they're just unsanitary. I brought along three travel size hand sanitizer bottles and ran through two and a half of them. As for masks, if you no longer wear them, I would still encourage you to bring one. Some airlines do require it, and when I was on Air Canada, they required every single passenger to have one for the entire duration of the flight, except when you're eating or drinking. So even if you're sleeping, you need a mask on. This off of Amazon, it's the KN95. It's really breathable, it's soft, and it does have that metal ridge so you can adjust to your nose. If you don't decide to bring one, I know that airlines do provide it if it is required. Since this is summer travel, remember to bring your sunscreen. Rain or shine, summer or fall, sunscreen is an important part of your routine, or it should be. Even if you don't wear makeup, remember to place sunscreen to all places of your body that are exposed to the sun. I really like this one because I have sensitive skin and it doesn't cause me to break out. So adding up onto that, my lips tend to dry out really easily, especially on planes and when there's any humidity in the air. Got two sticks of chapstick. This is my favorite one and I have yet to use this one, but I brought it just in case. And I also brought lipstick just to add a little color to my lips. All right, next up, hotel slippers and sandals. I stayed at hotels with daily housekeeping and they did a fine job keeping the rooms clean. That said, I still wouldn't walk around barefoot. I did bring some fashion sandals, but I totally forgot my hotel slippers at home. Fortunately, my first hotel had hotel slippers that I was able to use at that hotel. And then I brought it along for the rest of my trip and tossed it at my last location. Next up is sunglasses. If you're already following me on Instagram, you know that I always have my Chanel sunglasses on my face. I have really sensitive eyes and bright light irritates me, so that's why whenever I'm outside, I have sunglasses on. I am in search for new black sunglasses, but my Chanel ones have been with me through so much and I intend to wear them for the long term. Regardless of what kind of sunglasses you have, I would definitely carry them around for your summer travel. Next up is moisturizer, lotion, and hand cream. So. I love this moisturizer for my skin, especially after a long day and I wash off my makeup. My skin dries up so easily and this is great for sensitive skin. It really quenches it and becomes a little more supple, so I love this. And with increased hand washing and hand sanitizer use, of course your hands get dry. So I brought along a travel size of just hand cream and just tossed it in my bag and used it after I used my hand sanitizer. So if you don't like dry hands like me, then I would definitely carry hand cream. Another essential for me is a notebook and pen. So you never know whether you want to jot down names, addresses, or phone numbers. It's just good to have one. And this is an agenda that also has pages in the back that dubs as a notebook. So I just carried this wherever I went. Except I'm sure all of you already have this, it's toiletry bottles. So hotel toiletries can really be a hit or miss. Sometimes you immediately fall for it. Like when I was staying at the Fairmont in San Francisco, they had Malabo Rose 31 and I immediately fell in love. They had the conditioner, shampoo, shower gel, the lotion, the hand soap, and it was just lovely. From that point on, I fell in love with Malabo because of the hotel. On the other hand, sometimes branded items, such as the hotel brand, it's uh, a little funky. I always bring my own shampoo, conditioner, and face wash. Also, allergic reactions could potentially happen, and rather than ruining your entire trip, just stick with the known and something that works with you. All right, next up is a jewelry case. So I didn't bring this on my trip because I wanted to save room for souvenirs and bags that I purchased, but if I'm going domestically or I have more luggage space, I would definitely bring this. It's available on Amazon, so it has a snap closure, it has a space for your rings, little knickknacks, earrings, as well as necklaces. It's really convenient. It's not too heavy, but it does take up some space. If you are considering bringing a jewelry case for your travels, I would pack it last. Assess how much room you have left at the end and see if it's wise to actually carry this. It really does protect all your jewelry. I did find myself fumbling to keep my necklaces in between my clothing items so it wouldn't crack or just break and damage my jewelry. Next up are shoe bags and dust bags, similar to this one. So when was the last time you actually touched the bottom of your shoe? Probably never, right? Me either. I wouldn't want any of my clothes or 
rat or anything to come into contact with the bottom soles of my shoes. They are dirty and can harbor a variety of germs and bacteria. For those of you who are wondering when I'm filming my outfit videos, which are returning soon, I do thoroughly clean the bottom of the shoes that are featured in that video and some of them are actually new and I've never worn them outside of my house. Anyways, I digress. Uh, Whatever is on the bottom of your shoe can also damage your clothes, so I would highly suggest investing in shoe bags and if you don't want to buy an additional thing just use grocery bags or just ziploc bags next up is perfume i love wearing perfume whenever i'm out i'm alternating between two from creed the first one is love in white the second one is white flowers i do love them it's really not convenient to bring along on a trip i'd be scared that the bottle might break and it's just way too much for a short trip duration so I would highly suggest getting a travel sized one. So I have this little Misty or I kept it in my carry on in a clear bag. So I was able to go through security and it was no problem. Luggage air tags. So during this whole travel debacle, I didn't have air tags, but I did purchase two of them and they're on their way. I don't have them yet, but I do intend on using them whenever they come home. But speaking of luggage tags, remember when I said to separate your money previously or earlier in this video? I kept some of my cash in these luggage tags and I would keep them in separate places like the safety deposit box, other places in my luggage, separated them in a place that I would know but in a concealed location. Those of you who are unfamiliar with air tags, they are a convenient GPS locating device. Apparently your phone will inform you if there's an unregistered or unknown air tag within your vicinity and you'll be able to either look for it, determine it, or you can maybe contact authorities as well. I met so many interesting people during my trip and of course first impressions matter so i wanted to have fresh fruity minty breath and my favorite are icebreakers i always have this in my bag i pop it in before speaking to someone especially for the first time you want to create a good impression two final ones and this isn't all inclusive of course hair ties and socks and i have pretty long hair so i like keeping my hair up in a bun and just out of my face especially when i'm back in the hotel as for socks, I like keeping the AC down and having it super cold where I had to go under the comforter and just bundle up so I can keep warm. I really like that feeling. I, it might be weird, but I like doing that. So having socks is definitely essential for me, especially when I'm back in the hotel room. Of course, there's a bunch of other necessities and it's different from person to person, but let me know if I missed an essential item that you always carry during your travels. These are just some knickknacks I pack. If I went over everything, it would be a pretty extensive list. And as I mentioned earlier, I will be reverting back to making outfit videos, so if you've been waiting for that, it's coming. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.